What's going on guys? We have a 2009 Sea-Doo Speedster 150 here. A uh, guy brought it in saying that he can occasionally get to full speed, but more often than not, it'll get to around 30 miles per hour and then start to hesitate. So, brought it in. We're going to do some general maintenance on it, but we're also going to try to, to trouble fix that. First thing I'm going to do is connect to the Diag software just to see if there's any codes or, any, or anything that are lingering in there that can try to give me some indication of what's going on. Uh, but I'm leaning towards it's either supercharger slip uh, or the wear ring slash impeller has some clearance issues. We'll have to take a look. But right now I just have the ski connected to it actually has an onboard Noco Genius charger. So we are charging with that with my EcoFlow. Uh, just to keep it topped off. So I'm going to go grab my diagnostic software, connect to this, and we'll see what we find. Alright, so we have the diagnostic software connected here, and the only trouble codes we're getting are P0351 and P0353, which are ignition coils, um, and the fault code occurred at 120 hours. The machine has 125, so they're 5 hours old. The owner did say that they replaced the ignition coils, so the ski was most likely just in the on state when they did that. So these are not important. I'm gonna go ahead and clear those out. We'll do that later. Um, everything else looks fine. I did a test on the coils. They worked fine. Ignition, fuel pump, all that stuff came back clear. What I did find is I also took the supercharger uh, inlet off and I did a test on that just to see what the slip was and it came back at 11.6 Newton meters. Um, I did the test where you block the impeller from spinning and test the torque on the supercharger wheel. I have a video on that if you want to know how to do that for yourself. But it came back at 11.6 newton meters. The spec for a break in supercharger on the high end is 11 newton meters. So that means this supercharger was serviced at some point, which is good because it has a 100 hour service interval for this machine. The bad news is I took the dipstick out and we do have milky oil. I'm not sure how good that comes up, but there is water in here, which is not good. So there's only a few places that can come from. It could be the coolant itself, which is kind of low, uh, but not by much. Um, so it can either be a head gasket, it could be a leaking intercooler, or it could be the oil cooler itself, which is... That's the oil cooler down there. They do go bad. Not frequently, but they do go bad. So what I'm going to do is pressure test the coolant system. First, I do have the pressure tester already hooked up. So I'm gonna pressure test the system, see if that's leaking anywhere. I'm also doing a compression test on the engine. If it has low compression, we know there's a chance it's probably a bad head gasket. And then what I'm also gonna do is a boost leak test. And the boost leak test is handy because I can take off the coolant lines on the intercooler. And if we pressure the system, pressurize the system, and it's leaking out of the water cooling lines of the intercooler, then we know it's a bad intercooler. If it has good compression and the intercooler is not leaking, there's, that's probably a sign that the oil cooler is leaking. Uh, but we'll get to that as a point. We want to narrow that out. So first things we're going to do is go ahead and pressurize the coolant system. Go to about 10 PSI. All right, it's holding, but very, very slowly going down. So that may or may not be anything. Could just be a leak at the cap. Um, but let's move on to the next test. We'll do a boost leak test and see if there's anything coming out of the intercooler. All right, guys, I don't remember where I left off because it was raining, so I had to come back. Um, but I did do the coolant pressure test, and it seemed like it was holding. So the next thing I did was... Uh, hooked up the boost leak tester, and this is how we are going to test to see if the intercooler is leaking. <clears throat> Essentially what we'll do is pressurize the system, and the intercooler on here is a air to water intercooler. So it's very common for them to corrode from the inside out. When that happens, you can either leak air or leak water, and if it leaks water when you're riding, that water has, it's going to get sucked into the air chamber, and then the engine will suck it in. 
<clears throat> if that's what's happening, when I fill this up with pressure, when I pressurize the system, we should hear air coming out of the flush port in the back of the boat. So let's go ahead and fill it up. I'm going to pressurize, we'll just do 10 or 15 for so. And yes, there is a significant leak somewhere. Let's see if I can hear it in the back. And yes, there is a massive amount of air coming out of that the flush port in here. I can feel it. So the ski just has a bad intercooler. Pretty easy fix. Um, that's good because <clears throat> I was worried it was going to be the oil cooler, which not a big deal. It's easy to get to on this, but still kind of a pain because you have to drain the oil and everything, which I'm going to have to do that anyway. But this is a good test. So now we know the intercooler is bad. I will let the owner know that's all we need to replace uh, in addition to the oil. And he should be all set. Everything else checked out and we are good to go. All right, guys, I unfortunately don't know where I'm leaving off on this because it's been raining on and off all day for the week. Uh, but <clears throat> the last thing I found was that there is oil or water in the oil, which we can see here. Very milky tested, found that the water intercooler is bad. It's sending water through the engine. So I talked to the owner and we are going to do an oil change and obviously replace the intercooler, both uh, the intercooler is on the way and I already have the oil, so what I'm going to do right now is pull out the contaminated mixed oil with my siphon and we'll pour in some fresh oil. I have a new filter already, so we'll get the oil part of it taken care of and then the next thing will be to replace the intercooler. I believe that's going to be here in the next day. So let's go ahead and get started on suctioning the oil out. And you can see there just how milky this is. So. I'm going to let this go for a while, suck out as much as I can, and then we'll go ahead and fill in the new oil. Alright guys, it is now day whatever it is because of the rain on and off. Um, we finally did receive the oil and the replacement intercooler. They don't make OEM intercoolers for this model anymore, so this is a aftermarket one. Um, of course, you got to be careful with aftermarket ones because they can leak right from the start, but it is from a reputable supplier, so hopefully you will see some good results from that. I am still draining the milky oil. Uh, it's almost done, but you can see just how bad it is. So I'm going to do a few more cranks on that just to get that out. We'll swap out the filter. But more importantly, we need to replace the intercooler. So intercooler on this boat is underneath the rear panel. I'm not sure how good that's coming out, but we have the intercooler hoses. We have the water supply hoses. So we're going to remove those. Uh, we'll match the configuration on the replacement intercooler because of course we have the two water supplies at the bottom. One of these ports will be blocked off and the other is going to be a vent line. So we want to match that configuration. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and jump in the boat and we'll get the old intercooler out. Here is the factory intercooler. It definitely is factory. You can see it kind of bubbling in a spot. So, uh, but for being a factory intercooler, this actually lasted a very, very long time. This is a 2009, it's now 2025. So lived a pretty good life. It's definitely bulging in a few spots. So I have a feeling <clears throat> this wasn't a failure due to corrosion. I have a feeling this was not winterized at some point and it uh the water froze and expanded cracked internal channels because that's usually what happens so i'm gonna go ahead and take off the hoses on here relocate them to the new one put the new uh, pieces on and then we'll get the new intercooler installed all right i have the intercooler all prepped i decided to put the intercooler hoses on first just because it is kind of tight under there but uh, I may have to take them off to get it back into place, we'll see. But fittings are in place, vents in place, everything is secured here, so let's go ahead and we'll bring it back into the boot.
All right, I have the intercooler in place. I have it secured with the straps. I just got to put the cooling hoses on, tighten everything up, and then we'll be good to go down here. We'll finish up <coughs> putting the new oil in, and then what we're going to do is bring this down to the marina and do the boil out procedure just to get any of the remaining contaminated oil free of water. So <coughs> I'm going to finish this up down here, and then we'll get back up to the top. All right, guys, got everything situated here with the intercooler. All the hoses are back, everything I loosened, I double checked, especially the ex exhaust clamps. Everything is good here. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up with the oil change. All of the oil is out. I just need to replace the filter and add the new oil in. Check this out. That is a, that is a crushed filter, if I've ever seen one. Very clear indication that this thing was <clears throat> sucking up water, so. Let's get this replaced. All right guys, we are at the marina now. We're going to do the boil out procedure. Uh, I have buds connected and I have the ski ready to go. So let's go ahead and start it up. And essentially we're just gonna let this run until it gets up to operating temperature to boil out any water that's left in the system. So we'll let this go for a little while. All right, you can see the engine temperature is currently 105, 107 degrees. So that's slowly increasing. Uh, keep checking faults, no faults coming up. We'll go back to monitoring here. Battery voltage is good, intake air pressure is good. Everything is good here. So we're just gonna wait for the engine temperature to kind of get up to where it wants to be. And we'll kind of set it there for a little while. The goal is to burn off all the contaminated oil to get the water out. So we're just gonna let this sit for probably 10 or 15 minutes. All right, just an update. We're at 171 degrees for the engine and still zero faults. So we're just gonna keep on monitoring it. At some point, I'm gonna pull the dipstick and see what the oil looks like, see if it's still foggy or not. Uh, but so far, so good. Pretty much it guys boil out procedure is done i'm gonna let this all cool off and then i'll check the oil again tomorrow check the filter make sure it looks good uh the one of the concerns with the boil out procedure is that <clears throat> if there's still too much water in the oil that filter will collapse so that's something you want to keep an eye on but so far <clears throat> everything seems fine the steam really kind of slowed down in the dipstick tube so i'll check over everything tomorrow see how it looks and then uh we'll go from there all right guys, it's the next day. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this filter out and see what we're looking at. Um, there was pretty much a very tiny amount of water that was left in the system last night when we did the running at the marina. And yeah, you can see here, that's looking much, much better. Um, I'm probably gonna do a little bit more running today just to help clear this out, but the amount of water that's left in the system is very, very minimal. And this is with two oil changes. I'm not sure if I captured that on video or not, but two oil changes is what it took this time. Sometimes you have to do three, sometimes even more if the machine actually sank. But this one's looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all buttoned back up together and he should be good to go. So just to summarize what happened to this machine, uh, the owner brought it in saying that they were unable to get to full speed, which is around 60, 55, 60 miles an hour or so. Um, or when they can, it would back down and start to hesitate and kind of crawl back to 30 miles an hour. So first thing I did was, well, I mean, you saw the test. So we checked everything. We checked the supercharger to make sure that wasn't slipping. We checked the impeller and the wear ring to make sure they were good with clearance. And then uh, I did a pressure test on the system to kind of rule out whether if it was a intercooler or the oil cooler. 
we found out that it was the intercooler that was leaking and that's where we pulled this guy out and you can see that this was definitely a intercooler that was not winterized properly there's definitely some bulges in here and uh, overall pretty poor condition but at the same time this is the original intercooler so it had a pretty good life new intercoolers in I don't remember if I showed the follow-up pressure test on video or not but it held up to 15 psi without any leaks so that was good there we did a two oil changes um, just to kind of get the water out of the system and then we did a boil out procedure and that seemed to fix it so very very minor water left in the system it's not worthy of doing another oil change I'm gonna let the owner know that when he takes it out for the first time to just kind of go easy on it for a little bit to burn off the rest of that water and then he'll be good to go everything else is clear I checked everything in buds there's no more fault codes everything looks good temperature wise it's building the pressures that it should so we are all set to go here and um, this is pretty much a just a video that shows you why you should uh, winterize it's not how it started off it was supposed to be a troubleshooting video but you can exactly see why that is a urgent thing so five dollar bottle of RV antifreeze would have saved you whatever this cost um, of course this is a aftermarket intercooler which was super cheap uh, compared to a OEM or a very decent one which can run you five six seven hundred dollars so absolutely worth to do a proper winterizing if you guys have any questions at all feel free to let me know otherwise that's pretty much it for this one